What's up, Pickle Peeps? Today, we are talking about getting your customers to show up to your events. Now, this is kind of a direct follow-up of my previous video where I told you about adding an upcoming event section to your emails that you send out. If you missed that one, it'll be linked below, also above. So, like, step one that I taught you in that video was about adding an upcoming event section to your emails so your customers always knew what was going on and they could kind of be prepared for you, if that makes sense. You weren't blindsided and be like, oh, random event, didn't you know about it? Oh, random event, didn't you know about it? Like, they're pre-primed to it and they can always see your schedule, what's going on, especially if you do craft shows, farmer's markets, festivals, virtual events. I don't care which one. Um, I used to blend on all of them. If you're running challenges, if you are doing anything that is engagement driven to your people um, that they can interact with, you want to have it on a calendar. Heck, even if you're running a huge promotion, you want to have it on a calendar. I kind of usually list those as celebrations. <laughs> There's a stink bug in the ceiling. Um, I usually kind of list those as celebrations. I know one of the ones I recently did that for was, um, I had a big Star Wars promo going on, so I listed the celebration. Um, I was planning to do one for EMS week that kind of fell through. That's not getting on there. Um, that was listed as a celebration. So that's great for letting them know what's coming up. But how do we get them to show up? How do we stack the odds in our favor, give ourselves the best possible chance of our customers actually showing up to our stuff, especially the virtual events? The in-person ones, they might take the initiative and like put those on a calendar and everything because what's the best way to get a reminder? It's not a Facebook post. It's not a Facebook Live that Facebook may or may not tell your people. It's not an Instagram Live. It's not necessarily an email, depending on how often they check their emails. It's a calendar notification. And today we are gonna go deep on Eventable. I'm gonna show you guys how to set up four free add to calendar buttons that you can put in your emails and on your website. Ready for it? Let's go. But first, my name is Melissa Pickle. Welcome to the Handmade How Home of the Pickle Peeps, where we cover that technical how of handmade marketing so you can worry about raking in those profits. All right, now to the computer. Okay, Pickle Peep, welcome to Eventable. Now, why I love Eventable is because they have a free add to calendar button. The rest of Eventable stuff you got to pay for, you may want to, depending on how many events you do and such that you're driving. Um, but for me, just having this straight add to calendar button, that is the gold. All right, so how do we do this? How do we set this up on the free side? Because if you go to look to like create an account, it doesn't make it clear how to create a free account. So I wanna tell you guys how to set this stuff up. First things first, when you generate your calendar, you're gonna do it right here on the Add to Calendar button page. I'm gonna have this linked below for you in the description, no worries. Now, when you go in here, you're gonna be tempted to fill in all the information. I know I was, don't do it. Save yourself the time, all right? So in here, give yourself, like, make it the absolute bare bones thing you're going to do. You could even leave it at their settings because it doesn't matter. It's not going to transfer over, or at least mine didn't. So go ahead, fill in enough of the stuff that you need. Description, titles required, event. Okay. You need a title, you need a date. That's about what you need to have in here. Right, and you're going to click on generate button. It's going to ask you for your email address, put it in, click get button. It's going to spin for quite a while. I'm not going to do that part right now. It might take five, 10, 15 minutes. So if you're like setting up emails and whatnot, go ahead, create your button and then let that generate in the background while you go work on the rest of your email. Got it? Okay. Once your button is generated, you're going to receive an email that looks like this. It says, activate your add to, button, add to calendar button. Boom, done. So you would think, like I thought, I spent time, like I filled all the stuff in, I made a nice description, did all that good stuff, and I clicked on activate your button, and everything was gone. <laughs> I clicked activate your button, and it took me to this page right here, except instead of Summer Road Trip Collection pre launch Party, which was what I had created, it said to um, create a button. Which is why I said in the beginning, like, don't bother going crazy with getting all of your settings and all of the pretty stuff in there. So it's going to tell you to create an event. Now, when you go to create an event, it is exactly the same as it was on that free button generator. I don't know why the input didn't transfer over, but 
I'd rather just put it all in here where it's secure. So you want to put in the title, what is your event? And like, make it quick. So if someone's looking in Google Calendar or wherever they're looking up, whatever app they use, they know immediately what it is. So name your event, your times, you can change your, put your time zones in here. I'm spoiled. I'm Eastern Standard Time. <laughs> if you're doing a physical or an in-person event that's in a real life place that people can come to and interact with, put the location in. Um, put your description. What is the event that they're coming to? If it's not a physical, put the link. So like mine that I did is to my pre-launch party, which is taking place on Facebook. So I put in where it was. Now, if I was shooting the video in the event, I would have put the event link. Um, I just do them on my page. They're shareable. So I put it on, I uh, linked to the page. If you're linking to Zoom, put it on Zoom. If you are whatever, um, if you are doing an event that has tickets that people need to buy ahead of time, then you would use the location plus the website where people are going to. Now, I've had this bone of contention for a very long time doing in-person events that in-person like craft show coordinators and even festival coordinators don't seem to be that good at marketing. They don't seem to be that good at driving traffic. They're really good at putting up banners and posters and signs like maybe a week before the event. I've seen plenty of events where the signs went up maybe 12 hours before the start of the event or the day before. <sighs> they're not driving the traffic appropriately. They're not capturing traffic. They're not doing any of that good stuff. So while I would love to send people to my pages, they're already on my email list if they're getting this, um, so I don't have to worry about that. Send them to the other person's website. Send them to the event link. Do the event's job for them even though you paid to be there. <sighs> paid you rent, basically, so you could market and get people in so I can be reimbursed. Yeah, I get to hate places that don't market. Okay, um, and then notifications on here. Send your subscribers calendar notifications for your event. All right. So this one, we don't, we're not going to do calendar notifications. That's on the paid plans right there, but that would be like, you could trigger notifications for them. Or if you are editing your event, I think it would edit in real time. So I'm not worried about that one. Name of your event. I'm just going to put it in here so you guys can see event blah, 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 blah. That's about all we need. Like I said, this event and time is all it'll take to generate a button. So then you would click on create event and it's going to show up discover changes, something like this right here. Boom. There is our event. Now, if you need to edit things like do it now, you would click on edit event. You can edit the stuff. It's the same thing we just looked at. Otherwise you're going to want to click on share event. Now, when you are doing the initial one, if you're just embedding on your website, you could probably get away without having to do the email login activate button thing. Um, but if you are doing fancy stuff, you need to be in the account. So, ooh, customized style. I didn't see this button before. Look at all the cool things. Buttons, round or square, you can pick colors and you can choose oh, the order that they're, oh, look at all those extra ones. Google, Apple, Outlook, Office 360, Outlook, Yahoo, Thunderbird, IBM Lotus. I don't know what half of those are, but <laughs> I'm going to trust these people know what the most popular calendar apps are and they're going to put them on here. Besides, the only ones that I really know about are Google, uh, Apple, and Outlook. All right. So. When you look at this, I'm going to, I like the rounded ones. Once you um, come in, you click on share event. It's going to ask you, where are you sharing it? Are you doing it on email? Are you doing it on a website? Are you doing it on social? That's really cool. You can do it on social. This is like, oh, you can put calendar notifications. I haven't tried that one yet. <laughs> Change your background image. Very cool. So you can like have a branded event page. Beautiful. I'm going to cancel on that. Um, cause I didn't share on social yet website. Now, if you're doing email, it's going to ask you what provider you're using. So it's going to give you two separate blocks on here. Um, one is if you're using a, um, like an email service, like MailChimp, constant contact, they don't list Clavio. 
<laughs> um, all of those ones. And then if you're sending just like a regular email, if you're like a business person and you're sending in Gmail or Outlook or Yahoo or any of those. So since I use MailChimp, I went for getting the HTML code for MailChimp. Now, if you're sending a plain text email, that would be like those other options. What happens when I click on that? So there's that one, but we're using an HTML provider. So it's going to give you this drop down. You're going to select which one you use. They can see they have a ton of them in here, just not Clavio. I thought that was weird, but they do have an option for other. So maybe that'll work for Clavio. I choose MailChimp. Okay. Give it a second. <laughs> this, this site is a little strange, a little laggy, but that's okay. And it's going to give you the embed code that you can put into MailChimp. So in there or in whatever one you use, and you're just going to click the thing that's got like the two brackets like that. <laughs> and uh, you insert the code right in there. And it'll even tell you like, how do I use this code? And it'll show you a tutorial. Like that's awesome, right? Okay. So boom, that's done. Now, what does it actually look like when you get the email? I'm going to show you. Here's the email that I sent out, blah, 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 blah. The cool thing I'm doing here is I have this. So I have a account down timer. You're going to see like all the tools that I use in here to get people to come in. I have a countdown timer letting people know there is urgency and scarcity. This is an event that will happen and then will then be over. It's got to start time. Um, so I have that until the summer road trip. Uh, pre-launch party, click below to instantly add to your calendar of choice. And if I was really smart, I would, I would have even included arrow buttons, arrows below that. So I use Google Calendar. I'm going to click on Google Calendar and it takes a second. Like I said, it's a little laggy, a little bit I don't like about this, but it'll happen. All right. And boom, it's right here to add a, um, to add into my calendar. So I'll have that title the dates all coming in. Um, it's going to have in here exclusive VIP access and our, okay. So our link comes in on the text. So if I click save on that, you guys see, <laughs> and I click on there, boom, they have the link right there. It's clickable on their device on where to go and they can set notifications. You can remind people to set notifications, but at least we have a higher chance. It's more in their face by being right here on the, um, on their calendar. And that's about it. So here we go. Oh, and you can see all of my upcoming events. I have, um, Besides this pre-launch party, which I debated putting down there or not, I'll have the um, next trunk show. We have an in-person market, and then we have a trunk show. That one does not have tickets, nor does it have stuff. But as we get closer, that's the next thing. I'll put the event button in for that. If you're putting these on your website, if you have a calendar on your website showing all of your events, put buttons next to all of them. Let your customers decide which ones they want to subscribe to, they want to have added to their calendar. I think it's genius. Or... Another option is if you have a big event calendar, you could always create a um, public calendar on something like Google Calendars or whatnot. Google's a pretty easy one to do it on. And then you can create the calendar and you can give people a QR code to share it and they can download your calendar onto there so they know exactly where you're going to be all the time. I don't know if that's obnoxious or not. I'm not sure, but they would be, uh, it would be another cool way if people want to like follow, they want to know all the farmers markets, where, wherever you're going to be. So there we go. That is it for calendars. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, Pickle Peep. Um, <laughs> let me know, are you going to start using add to calendar buttons? Like, do you think this is cool or do you think it's a waste of time? I think it's awesome. I think that it will seriously help on show ups. And this is my first time sending one of these out like it is out in the ether in the public to my beasties which like you guys the pickle peeps also have the beasties those are on my um, e-com side my jewelry side and i will be asking them on saturday at the show like who used the add to calendar button did you like it all that stuff and there we go if you enjoyed this tutorial, Pickle Peep, make sure to give it a like, hit the subscribe button. If you're new, we are in a 90 day sprint. Today is day 29, something like that. We're almost to 30. <laughs> and I will see you in the next one. Have an epic day while you're building your epic business.